Your Royal Highness, Prinsesse Benedikte, Minister of Health and the Elderly, Ms. Sophie Løde, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great honor for me to present the keynote lecture here at the opening session of Alzheimer Europe, and a pleasure for me to welcome you all to Copenhagen. We are very proud that uh, the timing of this conference is uh, so extremely good uh, that it's, it's almost the same timing as the launch of the uh, Danish national strategy that we have been waiting for for so many years. The focus of my talk will be how to improve health care for people with dementia. During the past almost 30 years, I have met people with dementia and their carers every week. They have come to see me for a diagnosis or for a health problem related to their dementia disorder. I've had the privilege to see some of these people for a regular lifetime follow-up. No teaching book or slide presentation can replace what they have taught me, um, not only about how devastating a disease dementia is, but also what really can be done to alleviate some of their symptoms <coughs> and to make them, to some extent, happy and with a reasonable uh, quality of life. And my key points today will focus mainly on their need for health care. We all know that rehabilitation and psychosocial uh, support is very important at all stages of dementia. But uh, to maintain a good quality of life, people with dementia also need access to high quality health care. But adequate health care for people with dementia is so very dependent on an accurate and timely diagnosis, access to appropriate local programs for post-diagnostic support, and education and competences among the professionals um, who treat them. People with dementia, they need special attention and assistance in order to make use and to benefit from health services um, and also in order to maintain a healthy lifestyle. Just a little statistics uh, with some key figures. In Denmark, we have an estimated 80,000 people with dementia, but only about half of them are registered with a dementia diagnosis in our complete and unique Danish registries. Um, many more uh, work with patients or people with dementia every day, and many are caregivers. But after all, this is just statistics. I would like you to meet one of the, them, Marion. Marion is a person with uh, Alzheimer's disease, diagnosed five years ago. Already in the very beginning of her di disease, she made the decision to be open about her diagnosis, and she had a very unusual insight. Now, she has very advanced Alzheimer's disease, and her daughter assisted her when I met them last week for one of their visits. Can I have the first? Jeg ja, kan huske, da du fik diagnosen for fem år siden herinde, fik vi at vide, at det var Alzheimer. Du kunne huske den dag? Nej, det kan jeg ikke nu. Nej, men lige før kunne du huske det. Nå. Kunne du huske, at vi sad herinde, og så fik vi at vide, at det er Alzheimer? Nå, ja, ja. Det ved ja. jeg godt. Ja. Så sad vi og snakkede om, er det, er det Alzheimer? Og så fik vi at vide, at det var det. Ja, det var Alzheimer, ja. ja. Og det synes jeg da nok, øh, med min mor, så tænkte jeg, gud, for er det lige sådan. Men så gik det væk. Det var ikke, jeg har ikke, slet ikke været bange eller ulykkelig, eller, det er godt nok ærgerligt. Men det er ikke sådan noget, det ændrer mit liv. Overhovedet. Det synes jeg ikke. Nej, men du er flyttet. Du er flyttet fra dit eget hjem. Ja. Men var det det på grund af det? Det var på grund af alt sammen. Det var fordi, du kunne ikke bo alene. Nå. Du, du bor et sted, hvor der er nogen rundt om dig hele tiden, ikke? Der er nogen, som kan hjælpe, hvis du falder. Men du synes, det er godt. Du er glad for... Ja, okay. Ja. Bedre er det ikke. Nej. Du har happer om morgenen, som kommer og siger godmorgen, og hjælper med at give tøj på, og... Søde Happa ja, 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 ja. Ja. ja, Hun er jo fantastisk. Hun er meget sød. Ja, hun er fantastisk, ikke? Ja. Det er hun altså. Og hun kommer og hjælper dig med at få tøj på, og hun... I snakker ja. om, hvad du skal den dag, ikke? 
Uh, now, after five years with the diagnosis, my mother moved to a um, nursing home and she is very happy uh, because of the staff. The professional care keepers, they are uh, friendly and they are uh, caring. But I wish we could, as a society, invest more money in educating the professional um, care keepers, the staff, um, so they understand what um, a dementia diagnosis is. That's crucial. One thing is a nice building and uh, a garden, but what really means something is um, the persons. So, but what is healthcare all about for people with dementia? Well, first of all, they need a diagnosis. Um, that is really the platform on which careful planning can be done for what uh, they need uh, in other terms, in terms of healthcare. So, they also need help to live healthy. We all like to live healthy. Some of us try to do our best uh, in um, doing exercise, not having too much alcohol, uh, check blood pressure, etc. But if you have dementia, you will no longer be able to really keep up with that. So you need help. You also need help if you have a, a, a comorbidity, another, in other words, another condition uh, that needs uh, treatment. And I will focus just on a few of these issues. Um, that, that diagnosis, medication, um, and access to, uh, to healthcare. So, uh, so why do we not need a diagnosis? Many people will ask. Well, to understand the disease, to be able to express personal wishes for the future, uh, to identify uh, people who have actually other treatable conditions and who, who do not have a dementia disorder, to maintain social network and to re receive better help and support from the surroundings in order to manage the disease. Do we have evidence for that? In briefly, yes. For most of these questions, we actually have evidence that, the, that the, this, in fact, uh, helps. So, what is the access? Well, in Denmark, we have unique registries. Um, I do not think that access to healthcare is much different in Denmark than in other countries, but it's possible to actually uh, um, um, look at all people who are registered with a diagnosis in the secondary healthcare sector. Unfortunately, not yet in the primary healthcare sector. Um, and uh, what this uh, uh, map of Denmark shows is that the percentage of the elderly population who is diagnosed with dementia, which on average should be around 7%, is high some places, almost uh, 5 to 7%, but very low in, in other places. In other words, uh, that the there is inequality in the access to, 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 to diagnosis. Also, what we can uh, read from our registers is that those diagnosed with dementia, only 70% of them saw someone who knows, someone who is a specialist, a geriatric department, a neurological department, a psychiatric department. And uh, only about half of them were registered with a specific diagnosis, uh, like Alzheimer's disease or frontotemporal dementia. Um, the remaining uh, part were diagnosed with unspecific dementia, which may, uh, to some people, be a more stigmatizing diagnosis. Also, we've had the opportunity to validate how correct are the diagnoses that people are registered with. So in the elderly, most are, are, are correct. Uh, in the young, however, where the diagnosis is more complex, unfortunately, there are about 50% of those registered do not have dementia and even worse so in people from ethnic minorities because of language and cultural challenges, uh, the diagnosis in such population is even uh, more difficult. Uh, some similar figures are seen also from other countries. So really, there's so much we can do better. What are the barriers? Well, in the person with dementia, memory loss prevents adequate reporting of symptoms. Uh, the person may also be worried about the stigma and many have lack of insight. Uh, in the healthcare profession, prof professionals, there are still a therapeutic nihilism, um, assuming that nothing can be done anyway, and it's better to wait to give a diagnosis until it's evident for everybody. 
Um, some ha are very busy and have time constraints. Um, some are concerned about the stigma they may give to the person. And some uh, also are not certain about the diagnosis and many have discomfort in uh, disclosing diagnosis to people with dementia. And there's still a lack of competencies in many. I think this is a very international uh, problem. And as pointed out in the uh, World Alzheimer's Report that was uh, published just recently from Alzheimer's Disease International, there are also some organization and financial barriers to access to diagnosis. What about healthy lifestyle? We all would like to do our best to live healthy, have Mediterranean food, uh, perhaps do some singing or dancing um, and social activities. Um, but that becomes more difficult when you have dementia. Um, the reason is that you uh, are not so independent anymore. People with dementia need assistance to get out for a walk, for physical activity, for social activities. They, their network may disappear, as we have heard earlier today. Um, they are no longer able to prepare their own meals, or, and it may be difficult to make shopping lists. They have impaired hygiene, and they may no longer uh, check um, um, vascular risk factors such as high blood pressure, body weight, uh, glucose, uh, cholesterol. Um, on top of that, many people with dementia, because they are elderly people, also have other conditions. We call that comorbidity. And people with dementia, when they also have an increased risk of, some of getting new comorbidities like infections, malnutrition, incontinence, dehydration, adverse effects of certain medications, epileptic seizures, and neuropsychiatric symptoms. And new comorbidities of the, the, this type may go unnoticed because people with dementia have difficulties reporting about their symptoms. Um, unfortunately, lack of treatment or mismanagement, um, not maybe deliberate mismanagement, but mismanagement due to lack of knowledge and competences in healthcare professionals, of their uh, comorbidities may actually worsen the symptoms of dementia and lead to pain, physical disability, hospitalizations, or even death. Inappropriate medication may also worsen symptoms of dementia, and people with dementia may not get the same treatment as people without dementia for the same condition in hospitals. Um, and some conditions leading to acute hospitalizations may actually be prevented. Um, so there is much more to do. Uh, let us just look at one of these issues, the use of antipsychotics, which has been uh, one of the targets also in, in the UK dementia strategy to, to have this, uh, the use of antipsychotics reduced um, and quite successfully. In Denmark, uh, the use of antipsychotics has dropped from 30% in 2004 to now around 20% uh, uh, on average. And in people without dementia, of course, they have a much lower use. There is very good reason for people with dementia to have a higher use, because they, meet at, they may at, time, at times need an antipsychotic for a short period of time if they are very agitated, have psychotic symptoms, hallucinations, etc. But there are also many severe side effects associated with the treatment, so the treatment should, should be avoid it as much as possible and only a short time uh, if, if needed. Uh, despite the fact that, that these advices have been given and warnings have been, been issued by FDA and also the Danish FDA, there is a very uh, um, significant variation in the use of antipsychotics in Denmark with uh, one... Um, I'm not sure if I can make... No, that uh, one, one uh, region with very low, below 10%, and other regions, as you can see, very high, above 30% uh, of people with registered with a dementia diagnosis gets antipsychotics on a regular basis. So already when we published this uh, half a year ago, uh, this has started many activities in the country with some uh, regions trying to find out why do they have such a high use and what can they do and other regions uh, teaching uh, um, um, uh, about how what they did to have such a low uh, rate. And certainly there are no scientific or clinical reasons for, for such a difference across the country. Um, the use of opioids, or opioids uh, or morphine and similar drugs is very high in, in the elderly in Denmark, but 
more high in dementia than in people without dementia, despite the fact they do they do not have more pain um, uh, giving conditions. So, um, the and because morphine has has severe side effects or may have severe side effects, uh, in particular in people with brain disorders, this is also something that that should be looked carefully at. Again, some people need uh, morphine for the pain they have. This is not unique to Denmark. Um, this uh, is an international problem, but I think that we can uh, learn from one another about how to, how to reduce uh, the level of uh, inappropriate uh, medica medications. This is a very busy slide, but, but it's with the light green color, all the people with dementia are shown, and with the dark green color, people without dementia is shown. And this is the number of somatic and hospitalizations, outpatient visits uh, on the top, and on the bottom, physical contacts in general practice, and in other words, seeing your general practitioner either in his office or in a home visit, and email and phone calls with your general practitioner. As can be seen, elderly people with dementia do not get to hospitals as much as other people without a dementia diagnosis, which perhaps makes sense because it's not so good for them to come to a hospital. But even for outpatient visits, which could be better, they have a much lower frequency. Um, and um, you may think then that that is because they go to their general practitioner. But as can be seen from these figures, they have fewer contacts with the general practitioner as compared to those without dementia, although one may argue that they could need more contacts. And the email and phone calls uh, are excessive in people with dementia, but those are not emails and phone calls from the people with dementia. These are emails and phone calls from the staff. So in fact, there is a gap here between the need of people with dementia and what we can offer. And this is something that I think can can uh, that already there are very good initiatives in the national strategy to do something about. So, um, what are the barriers? Well, people with dementia again have difficulties reporting symptoms and following guidelines uh, and making appointments with healthcare services. They may not be offered appropriate evaluation and treatment for their symptoms, and they are therefore totally dependent on the family caregiver who coordinates all the contacts with a wide range of well, healthcare professionals and sometimes also coordinate contacts between, in between these healthcare co professionals. And um, they are also dependent on healthcare provision from primary care specialists and hospital staff who are proactive and have basic knowledge about dementia. And let us now hear what Marian and Anna have to say about this. Can I have the next video? And for us, it's been essential that we had uh, contact to um, a memory clinic with all these, uh, all the expertise gathered in one place where we can go to the uh, psychiatrist and the uh, neurologist, I think it's called, and the, all, the, all the things are gathered in one place and she is treated like a human being instead of only a, a disease, yes. Um, that's been crucial for us. Um, and I wish everybody could have that. Uh, we are very, we've been very lucky. Uh, in this process, for me, it's been um, very important to, uh, to realize that my mother needs help for almost everything. And it's not my job to give that help. I'm not the one um, to help her, but I'm the one to guarantee that she gets the help she needs. I chose to, to downscale my job because uh, it takes a lot of time to organize, to, um, to visit doctors, uh, dentists, everything. It's been at least... Um, one day a week, I've been, uh, I've spent helping my mother with practical things the last uh, five years, and I wish that with the diagnosis, with a, a dementia diagnosis, that you would automatically um, have uh, a conversation with the general practitioner about what kind of help you need as a family 
and uh, that you have uh, yeah. help with all these practical things. Because what you really want is to um, still see your mother or your father or, uh, as a human being and keep that relationship instead of only being the organizer of all the practical things. So really, um, Anna has had to deal with not only, of course, her mother, which she likes to do, but, but also with all these many people uh, that have come into uh, her life and she felt she has been the coordinator of everything. And what she's really asking for is that there would be some kind of co case coordinator who would be who would help her at least uh, with some of the coordination so that she could be more a daughter than a coordinator and also that there would be some access to, to specialists who really know about the disease that her mother has. So uh, there are some time constraints, so I will just go on here with... Um, I think one of the solutions really, um, as we've already heard from our Minister of Health and Yella, the uh, national quality indicators, because they will strengthen uh, the collaboration between the health sectors and among professional groups. For instance, in order to lower the use of antipsychotics, you just have to work together, general practitioners, hospitals and, and primary care staff. And it will also reduce the inequality in the access to care by simply making the inequality visible. And it will also make results of local investments and strategies visible. If you do something extra, it can be seen on the figures. And uh, also, in terms of governance, this serves as transparency, public availability of data. Uh, so therefore, uh, I think uh, our national strategy, we've already heard about it, uh, is actually going to so, uh, to, um, to give uh, solutions to some of the uh, problems, some of the challenges that I have been talking about, uh, which are not unique to Denmark, but, uh, but, but quite international. And I think that uh, our national dementia strategy, uh, which I would like to congratulate you with, is uh, really um, very, very ambitious, and but realistic. Uh, we can do it. And... Uh, we are also going to work with national indicators in Denmark. The, the proposed at this time are the proposed portion of people diagnosed with dementia who gets a specific diagnosis that has to become much higher. The proportion of people with dementia diagnosis who receive antipsychotic treatment that has to become much lower. The first we take as an indirect um, indicator for the quality of post-diagnostic support. If there's good support, you like to make a diagnosis. And the second, we take as an indirect quality for uh, indicator for the quality uh, of care. If there's good quality of care, you don't need so much antipsychotics. And finally, as we've already heard, uh, the number uh, all all uh, municipalities should be dementia friendly. And now I'd like you to see the final video of uh, Maya and Anne. So Maya, what then have you done all the all? So what then have you done all the all? I have done all the all for the have my family. Yeah. Det er jo det bedste i verden, og yeah. så har jeg også en del veninder. Yeah. Så det er ikke jeg, er ikke... jeg er aldrig ked af det at sidde og græde i hjørnet og sådan noget. Mener du det? Nej, du laver jo mange ting. Altså, du laver rigtig mange ting. <laughs> altså, jeg er ikke... Jeg vil da gerne være fri for at have Alzheimer. Mm. Men øh, det er ikke sådan noget, jeg dagligt tænker på. Altså, aldrig. Nej, du laver mange ting. Altså, du har jo et rigt liv. De har øh, for, ja, du har venner. Ja, du har venner. Og du har familie, der Ja, der min familie, det er det bedste. Ja. Selvfølgelig er det det. Ja. Du og Thomas og ungerne. Ja. Then says, uh, and my children says, it's, um, yeah, it is such a shame that she has Alzheimer's disease. And of course, I wish that uh, you could find a cure for it. Uh, but it takes a lot of resources. I hope we can invest more money in the research. Yeah, yeah. so really, we need to better health care for people with dementia. But of course, from the words of Maya and Anna, we would rather not have Alzheimer's disease uh, in our uh, society. And that is why uh, defeating Alzheimer's disease and other de dementia should constantly be on the European agenda, uh, as pointed out also here by the group of scientists uh, headed by Bengt Wienberg in the uh, 
uh, this summer in, uh, in uh, Lancet. And I'm very proud that also, uh, and uh, very happy that, uh, that in the Danish national strategy, there is also one of the 27 initiatives is to develop a new national research strategy. I think we can contribute very well to this agenda uh, in Denmark uh, with the good research we are doing in, in very many fields. So, um, um, I would like to uh, congratulate you again with the National um, Dementia Strategy, and I would like to thank Mayan and Anna for contributing to this presentation, and Alzheimer Europe and the Danish Alzheimer Association for organizing this conference, and the Danish Ministry of Health and the Elderly for financial support to the Danish Dementia Research and uh, Education Center. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.